hides the glory. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Eyes the glory. revival in our lives. I always say if you've been doing it wrong, you can always choose today to be the day you start doing it right. Amen. And God will be good to you. Let's love him this morning. Let's love him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amazing. You're amazing. You make my 
promises are yay and amen. You're not a man, you never lie. All your promises, all your promises are yay and amen. You're not a man, you never lie. Oh, come on, somebody say it again. All your promises, all your promises are yay. His love is amazing. Jesus, your love is amazing. I want to tell somebody here today that this too shall pass. Amen. Amen. I hear it in my spirit. Doesn't matter what you're going through. It would pass. And God is going to bring rain after. He's going to bring the sunshine after your storm. Amen. He knows how to just make the sun pierce through those dark clouds. And all you will see, and it's going to happen sudden, you know. I like sudden things. And as, as tragedy happens suddenly, so would your blessing happen suddenly. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, expect a sudden, a sudden breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah. If a man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All oh, things have passed. Behold, all things are new. Who the sun sets free, truly free indeed. What I'm going through is working out for me. Yeah. Say, if a man says, Yeah. All things are past, behold all things are new Who the sun sets free, truly free indeed What I'm going through, it's working out for me Let's say it again If a man be in Christ, eh? If a man be in Christ, he is a new creation All things are past, things are behold all things are new, new. Who the sun the sets sun free, sets free. It's truly free. What I'm going through. What I'm going through. It's working out for me. Oh, I shall be the head and not the tail. I'll have and not be in need. 
No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Oh, it's turning around for I shall be the head. I shall be the head and not the tail. How about the Lord? No weapon formed against me. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He's turning around. He's turning around for I see everything. Walking in my favor. I see it turning around. Do you see it turning around? You gotta see it. I see all my disappointments turning around. All my heartaches, every tear is turning around. Come on, somebody give me praise. I see all my disappointments turning around. Every trouble turning around. Every breath turning around. Every king turns turning around. Every trouble turning around. Every disappointment turning around. Every delay turning around. Every denial turning around. Turning around. Yeah. If a man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are past, behold, all things are new. Who the sun sets free, truly free indeed. What I'm going through, it's working out for me. If a man say, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are past, behold, all things are new. Who the sun sets free. You are free indeed. What I'm going what through. I'm going Come on. It's working out for me. I shall be the head and not the tail. Oh. I bow and not be me. No one part from the king's me shall prosper. It's turning around for me. I shall be the head. I shall be the head and not the tail. Above and on, above and not be no one put from no the things but it shall not prosper. prosper. Turn it around, turn it around for me. I see everything, turn it around for my good. It's turning around, turn it around for my good. 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 I see all my heart is turning around. I see all my failures turning around. Turn it around for my it's good. working in my favor. Turn it around for my oh, good. Oh, oh, oh. Turn it around for my good. So turn, turn. He has turned it around. He's turning around. He has turned it around. Jehovah, turn it around. He has turned it around. Turn it around for my good. Turn it around for my good. Hey, turn, turn. Turn it around, 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 Jehovah has a final say. Come on. He turns my life around. He turns my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has a final say. He turned it around. He turned it around. He turned my life around. Come on, 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 come on. If you believe it, give the Lord a dance. Come on. He turn it around. Turn my life. Turn it around. 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 Tell me who has the final say. Tell me whose word 
remains the same. Ah, he turned, turned my life around. He turned it, turned it, turned it, turned it, turned it around. Oh, he made a way where there is no way. Ah, Jehovah. As I find out, say, turn it around. He turned my life around. Turn it around. He turned my turn life around. around. Hey, 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 hey. He makes no way where there is no way. Come on. Come on, somebody. Hey, he's the Lord and dance. Come on, he's the Lord and dance. Come on, he's the Lord and dance. Come on, he's the Lord and dance. 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 Say glory be, adoration be. Say glory be to the Lord in the highest. Hallelujah. From every nation, from every nation, uh, from every tribe and tongue, from every kingdom, uh, from every land. Say glory be to our God in the highest. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Everybody, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Everybody shout it. Everybody, everybody shout it. Everybody, everybody. Everybody shout it. Everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah, Hallelujah is the highest praise. Shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it. Tell me, He is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. He is the Lord of Dance. 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 He's the Lord that does come. Tell me, He is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. A power power before Him. He is the mighty God. Dominion power before Him. He is the mighty God. Principalities power before Him. He is the mighty God. Every sickness power before Him. He is the mighty God. Every trouble power before God. He is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah! We praise the Lord. Oh, 
Onya mi koko koko beni. Onya mi kaka kaka beni. Onya mi koko koko. Onya mi kaka kaka. What a mighty God is this. What a big God we serve. What a big God, what a big God, what a big God we Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Lift your voice and sing a new song to the Lord.
there is healing in the house, somebody. Set yourself loose. Lift your hands and tap into the presence of the Lord. River flow, river flow, river flow, flow in this place, flow in healing and power, God. Set the captives free, heal the sick, do a miracle, God. Do a miracle, God. Reverence the Lord. Forget about who is standing beside you. It's between you and your God. Maybe you've been through something this week. It is your time to reach out for grace, to reach out for strength. Tell him because he is good, he is good. It's mercy shall endure. today and your week has been a painful week if you can by faith step forward the Lord has for you a miracle a touch because it's good you got a news that was not a good one and he shot it whatever you got going on I think you can step forward the Lord got something for you this morning Shine. there is something pending that you gotta do and you don't know how to do it the Lord got wisdom for you but you gotta step by faith can and a higher his mercy shall endure you Impossible, you say, but I got good news for you. If you can step forward by faith, there is nothing impossible. Uh, oh, God will do a miracle for you as you step by faith. Expect a miracle. I see a shift. He passed through the ocean. A door just swung open. He got ocean. Because he's good. As you stand, you stand in reverence to the Lord. I will do what the Lord said do. My devotion. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my, 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 my Say, because he's
us to pray for Miss Miss Tutu. Those of you who know Miss Tutu, she comes here, sits at the back over there. She's been here with her husband a few times. She lost her husband, I think, this week. Uh, so we're going to lift her up in prayer. We're going to pray that God will strengthen her. We're going to pray that God will be her peace. God will be her strength in this time. And that the Lord will send her help in this time of bereavement. It's not easy for those who have experienced loss before. You just know that you are out of alignment. Your thinking sometimes is not straight. And so she needs us. So if you don't mind, just lift a prayer for Miss Tutu right now. The Lord be her strength. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your daughter and her family. We want to come to you, the God of all comfort, who comforts us with the comfort with which we can also comfort others who go through what we have been through. This morning we send your prayer to heal and to deliver. And not only that, to comfort and to strengthen. To get peace that passes all understanding. No doubt there will be questions on the mind. Questions that have no answers. But you know all things. You have all power. So we pray, Jehovah, wrap your loving arms around Miss Tutu and her family right now. Wrap your loving arms around her children and grandchildren and everybody that is affected by the death of a husband, a father, a brother, a friend. And we pray, Jehovah God, that you would be their strength and comfort. Let the wind of God blow let it bring the divine comfort and strength right now God as tears run down their eyes God we pray that you will soothe their soul let there be peace that passes all understanding let them know that their beloved is resting peacefully with them Give them strength to go on. And give them strength to grieve. And be able to fully express the love they have for this one. Lord. Be with us today. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are you guys glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Okay, I think you're probably still slain in his presence. We can do a little better than that. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Come on, saints. Make some noise for the Lord this morning. As we were worshiping the song um, that, I don't know, the Lord speaks through, uh, to me through song. The song that I was reminded of great things he has done. Greater things he will do. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he has done. Amen. Has the Lord done something great for you? Has the Lord done something great? Greater things he will do. Amen. Hallelujah. We are so excited and pumped up to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We are so blessed to have our senior leadership, the Reverend Dr. Trevor Grizzle and his beautiful wife, Pastor Maureen Grizzle, our assistant pastor, Pastor Wando Abadakpi, and his beautiful wife, Auntie Patience Abadakpi, 
Um, by any chance, do we have any special guests worshiping with us for the first time this morning? Any? Hallelujah. We won't put you on the spot, but we are so glad that you could join us this morning. So one of our ushers will pass out a guest information card. So fill that out and just place it in the offering basket. And our pastor will be happy to greet you after service. So thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. So at this time, let us roll our announcement video. Welcome to Hope International Ministries. Good morning. Welcome to Hope International Ministries. Hola, Fia. Hope International Ministries. In Dinami, welcome to Hope International Ministries. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Hope International Ministries. Buenos dias. Welcome to Hope International Ministries. The burden of the leadership of him is that all peoples, irrespective of the racial, cultural, or ethnic background, will find a place where they truly belong as children of God. The vision of Hope is... Serving locally and reaching globally. You can give separate amounts for offering, mission, and upcoming conferences. If you'd like to give online, just text your amount to 84321. Again, that number is 84321. church what is our 2020 theme for this year all right let's try that one more time I was just testing you that time let's do a little better this time what is our 2020 theme for this year moving onward and upward it's a theme song that says we're moving on up to the east side but we're not moving to the east side we're moving onward and upward praise the Lord amen so I have a few announcements for you all there will be morning prayer this week from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and that is Monday through Friday here at the church. Bible study continues this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pastor Wonder would like to meet with the following members after church. Uh, Frederick Bampuku, Miles Clark, Marte Quay, Albert Elorm, and Patience Abodakpi. This year's I Rise is scheduled on Saturday, April the 11th, and Sunday, April 12th. Our Good Friday service will be on Friday, April 10th. Further updates shall be provided prior to the days. So has anyone been blessed by I rise? Amen. I've been blessed too. All right. Hallelujah. Oh, this side. I was okay. All right. I rise is coming up. So mark that on your calendars, April 10th through the 12th. Next Sunday, February the 23rd is Black History Sunday. All right. Woo! Black History. Amen. So we'll be celebrating Black History. There will be a membership meeting on Sunday, March 1st after church. So again, March 1st, we will have a membership meeting um, after service. At this time, could we place the confession on the board, please, or on the screen? The confession. All right, let us stand and recite this together. All right, are you all ready? All right, here we go. I am not ashamed of Christ my Savior or the... night service, amen. So this is, this is uh, what we're doing with our prayer in the church this year, amen. And so please, um, if you're not on, you don't have the number for the line, let us know. We would um, um, uh, uh, announce it, put it on the screen at a, a point. Those who are not on our WhatsApp, you would be, um, if you want to be on it, we would let you, you can see me and I'll, I'll add you to it. We'll give updates over there so that you know what is happening. Amen? Amen. We like that? Yes, this church is a praying church, so we want to uh, find a place we can all congregate and it looks like we can meet in cyberspace. And so let's meet in cyberspace wherever that is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have the praise team come and let's do our offering real quick. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, we want to encourage everybody when it comes to giving. Amen. Just like we encourage you when it comes to prayer and anything we do in this church, um, giving is part of our worship to God. Amen. And like I told you last week or two weeks ago, whichever day, this year 
you covenant with God. Let it be between you and God. That if every Sunday when you come to church, if, if it's five dollars that you commit to God, tell God this year I'm going to commit to to sow ten dollars every Sunday that I'm here. If whatever it is, just just challenge God. Just go on a challenge. Throw God a challenge and see what he will do. Amen. Been praying about that and, and it came to me to share that that the challenge God on giving. And you never you you will be surprised what you would do. A woman uh, had shared a testimony about that that she just one day woke up and said, Told God, God, I'm gonna challenge you on giving. And she started and she gave what whenever she gave something, God overdid it for her. So she had she bought a new one day, she bought a new Jaguar. And she says, I'm going to I'm going to test you on this. Bought the Jaguar in one week, gave it out. Because she was trying to challenge God. And he surprised her what God did for her. She testified that three people, three from nowhere just came and blessed her with what is three times more than the price of the Jaguar she bought. You try God and see so that you would have your own testimony. Because it's good to say amen to somebody's testimony. How about we saying amen to your testimony? That you will come and stand here and say, I tried God. And this is my testimony. And we will all say amen with you. You would say amen with me too. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's give this year. Try God on that. Let's move onward and upward in our giving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give cheerfully to the Lord. See what the Lord has done for me. See now what a mighty God he is. See what the Lord has done for me. See now what a mighty God he is. See, see. see oh, what the Lord has done for see me. Now. See now oh, what a mighty God he Come is. and see, see what the Lord has done for me. Done for see me. now. See was a tumbling down, was a tumbling down, was a tumbling down, so we praise the Lord again. Was a tumbling down, was a tumbling down, oh, was a tumbling down, so we praise the Lord again. See what the Lord has done for me. See now what a mighty God He is. See what the Lord has done for me. See now. What a mighty God in your season. Oh, what a mighty God in your season. See now. What a mighty God in Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Oh, see now. What a mighty God in your season. There was a tumbling down. Yeah. Everyone. Now we pray this all again. Say, what's a tumbling down? Was a tumbling down, was a tumbling down. Yeah, he's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. My God is a wonder. My God is a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Oh, he's a miracle working God. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. He's a miracle working God. My God is a miracle. You need a miracle. See it. Say it. He's a miracle working God. Yeah. He's a miracle working God. Yeah. My God is a wonder. My God is a miracle. Oh. Come on. One more time. My face it. He's a miracle working God. God is a miracle working God. God, you are a wonder. My God is a miracle working God. There was a tumbling down. There was a tumbling down. There was a tumbling down. So we praise His holy name. The wall. There was a tumbling down. 
It was a tumbling down every wall, poverty wall. It was a tumbling down. Eternal Father, we are grateful. We are grateful for your manifold blessings in our lives. That we can walk, we can talk, that we are alive today is a big blessing. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you that in spite of last week, in spite of whatever did not work as we wanted it to, you are still God. We are still standing. And this week is going to be a good week in Jesus' name. For you, O oh God, have set for us goodness, and we will walk in the goodness of the Lord. May the blessing of the Lord come upon you. May the blessing make you rich and add you no sorrow. May God cause you to walk in your high places. May God cause you to see his goodness in the land of the living. The Lord bless the works of your hands. Whatever your hand finds doing, may it be blessed in Jesus' name. May God make your seed yield its increase. In the mighty name of Jesus, we prophesy good jobs, well-paying jobs. May God open doors for you where there are no way. In the name of Jesus, may God cause you to receive an increase in your pay and bring you bonuses by the power of the Holy Ghost. May you find treasures hidden in dark places and riches in hidden places. The Lord and the seal of the Lord perform this for you. You receive that. Say amen. Man. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. All right, at this time, let us welcome our pastor, the reverend, the doctor, the bishop of this house, Trevor Grizzle. Amen. Praise the Lord indeed, for the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. The Lord is in this place, and I hope you felt his presence. God has been here, and where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty, there's freedom, there's deliverance. There is peace and there is hope and all good things in his presence. Amen. Amen indeed. It's so good to have you. And those of you who are new to us, welcome to Hope. We are a different church in the sense that you've heard the singing in different languages, the worship in different languages. That's who we are. And we are trying to be just a small microcosm, that means a small world, the larger world that heaven is. Because one day when we get to heaven, we're going to hear all these different languages. The, the only difference is that we'll understand all these different languages. So when they speak in Uruba, Uruba, Shri, Ga, Franti, Hindi, Urdu, Jamaican, Patwa, We'll, we'll all understand, you know, but then we, an American and English too. Yes. Yeah, got to bring some English in there, of, and Chinese. Of course, English will be way down, you know, <laughs> because there's so few English speakers in the world compared to Chinese and Hind Hindus and, well, anyhow. So, I hope you're enjoying Hope, though. We are, we are, we are different, indeed. I don't think there's a church like this in Tulsa. But God, anywhere, but God has uh, given the vision for this to be this way, that when you come from the different nations, you can feel at home, feel at home. Yes, man. I'm Jamaican, you know. Uh, and I guess a J Jamaican response, that antiphonal response back there, that's very good. Amen. And we have some Jamaicans in the house. Um, Mrs. Donaldson from Jamaica. Uh, it's so good to have you again this morning. I 
don't want to put you on the spot, but if you feel you want to come and give a little short, brief, te oh, some other time, that's all right. Perhaps Tanisha will do it for you. <laughs> She's even more scared, <laughs> Tanisha. <laughs> We're so good to have you this morning. So good to have you. Yeah. Amen. I began a series many, many weeks ago now. You, it goes way back. And um, I, I did three installments in the series. And then we've been having different speakers come. And I know the series really isn't finished. But perhaps you have lost track and perhaps you are saying, Pastor, you, what you gave was enough. But I don't feel it's enough. I think God was wanting to have some more. And this will be the last in the series. And then we'll continue with, with some other things. But we thank God for the many good speakers we have in this house. I'm looking at some of them. and They haven't uh, decided yet when they're going to want to preach. But yeah, we have some good speakers here. Uh, next week, we're going to have one of our brothers from Ghana. A powerful man of God, so humble, uh, so encouraging, but he's doing his internship at ORU, and um, we're going to have him to, to preach for us. Then there are others yet who uh, are also doing internship, will be ministering, because it's a part of their training, you know. And of course, this our brother, perhaps doesn't need any training, because I know he's done this, this so many times in, in Ghana anyway, but it's a requirement, uh, so he'll be doing it. Uh, anyhow, <clears throat> I want to take you back to Hebrews, the 12th, 12th chapter. I didn't have any person to read in the different languages this morning because I was afraid that we wouldn't have enough time, and I want to make certain I finish. Uh, it's kind of hard to um, wrap things up when it's been so long since I last gave you the last installment. Perhaps there's some discon disconnect between what was said uh, the last time with what was said earlier and what I'm, I'm going to say now. But <clears throat> I, I began the theme, disciplined for what? Disciplined for the distance. Disciplined for the distance. And we're talking about a, a marathon race here, see. That's what the writer of Hebrews has in front of us. And just for background, I want to go back to the text itself. And uh, of course, I want to read again in the message by Eugene Peterson. I choose this message because the language is so very vivid, so very graphic, so very captivating that you get it. You don't have to begin to reason out what the writer is trying to say because it's so much in our language, isn't it? So Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 10, and he's compressed these verses for us, so it won't be long, a long reading. But you can read along in the, your translation, your NIV, your NLT, KJV, your Chi, your Fanti, and Ga, and whatever else you may have. And f from... Uh, well, <laughs> let's leave that alone. Okay, so Hebrews 12, 1 through 4. Disciplined for the distance. Do you see what this means? And what this is going back to chapter 11. This great cloud of witnesses, the pioneers of the faith, who triumphed through faith, through a hard situation, some losing their lives. But you see how they stood. They never caved in, never gave in, never buckled. They stood and they finished their race. And their names are inscribed on the wall of faith, the hall, in the hall of faith. There their names stand, emblazoned for us to see that these won. They ran their race and they won. But how did they do it? Through faith. They stayed the course. They kept the faith. They went through their hardship, their trials. And they say, we will never give up, never give in, never give out. 
we'll stay the course all the way to the end, to the victor's crown. So the writer says, do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the, tr the way, all these veterans cheering us on, it means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in, in and with God, shame, whatever. And determination in my spirit to go through this, but I can do it. But when the end is unknown, how long will this it last for? And you have this siege mentality. I'm under attack, and I know, don't know when I'm going to get out of this thing. You can get discouraged. So you can go through sickness. If you know this is going to last for a month, six months, doctor says, in six months you're going to come through this all right. Don't worry about it. You'll come through. You can go through the hardest surgery. The doctor says, oh, in, in, in nine months you're going to be right back on your feet again. Don't worry about it. Just be patient. But when you're told this thing is incurable or I can tell you when you may come through, you may never come through. <laughs> Somehow, your spirit flags. Your heart sags. And you give up. And the thing that Satan uses the most to make us quit the race is discouragement. Is discouragement. If he can get us discouraged, he's won. He sows some doubt in our minds. The doubt brings us to discouragement, and discouragement brings us to quit. And so the writer of Hebrews knew, knew these Christians. There are Christians that come to Jesus out of the Jewish faith. They were getting all kinds of persecution, trials, they couldn't, some couldn't work. Some were uh, spoken against and criticized by the community. Some they were kept out and ostracized from everything. After a while, some began to wonder, why is it this way with me? Why, is, why, why, why are things so tough? Read chapter 10. Some stopped going to church. They quit. Can't take it any longer. And so the writer of Hebrews brings them to the fact of this race that is the Christian faith. It's a race. It's a race. And if you read the New Testament, there are many places where the Christian life and the Christian faith is exemplified by a race. A race is something you run. But of course we understand that more often than not, the, the illustration of race is not a a hundred yard dash where you throw everything at it right now, like you say in bolt, you know, lightning. Oh, it's the marathon. The marathon. And there are more dropouts in a marathon race than any other race. And you find that in the Christian faith also. There are those who come in, many of those who come in, they ex expect an excitement that will sustain them throughout their life. They feel that everything is going to be hunky-dory. Oh man, it's, a, it's a, a Sunday evening picnic in the park. Jesus in the parable describes it as a sower on the seed. So the sun comes up quickly. That's the excitability. But there's no depth. And so when the, when the sun comes up, they wither quickly and they die. And that can happen to us so very easily. 
as we seek to run this Christian race, as we seek to climb higher, because I believe that every time uh, trials come into our lives, those trials are to take us higher. Yes. The trials are meant to take us higher. I was reading just this week, and I've heard, I've heard this story many times. I was reading this week of this person who was watch, watching a monarch butterfly. It had just come out of the chrysalis, you know, or tried to come out of the chrysalis to form those strong wings. But the small, there's a small aperture through which it's going to come out, and all the juices are there, and you're wondering how can it squeeze through this little hourglass to come out into the open. And so this person was watching this little creature squeezing itself squeezing itself and he thought I want to help it not knowing that is through the process of being squeezed being squeezed that those wing muscles were developing to take this little beautiful creature into the sky to so become this wonderful butterfly rainbow butterfly if you please and so the person pulled, helped to pull this monarch butterfly out, helping it out, and thought, no, fly. Stayed there, couldn't go anywhere because the wings hadn't been developed. The process that would make those wings strong was taken away from it. It was aborted. And so, when trials come into our lives, God is saying, I want you to climb higher. To climb higher. Develop wings so you can fly, so you can soar. But sometimes we let those trials bring us down because we've got a different perspective. We're thinking, God, you're cruel. And of course, it's not always that God is on your trail, or God isn't using you for target practice. There's a devil, a devil who comes at you. But you see what the devil means for good, God can use. Sorry, what the devil means for bad, for evil, God can use for good. Uh -huh. When I read that Balaam was sent to curse the Israelites, but all he could do was to bless the people, I said, God, thank you. But whom you've blessed, no one can curse. No one can curse me because God has blessed me. Amen. So I live in that freedom that anything that the devil has meant for me, God can work. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord and those who are called unto his purpose. Amen. So, yes, this race. And um, there are a few things I want to say. But in this race, we have these pioneers, these pioneers to personate. We have a price to pay. We have a person to pursue. And we need patience. Need patience to go all this way to win the race. I, I could, I could, I will pick up these as we go. But seeing you have, let's get into the NIV. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, the great cloud, these pioneers, to personate, that means we imitate and impersonate them. The writer says, that ought to give you adrenaline. That ought to give you encouragement. They have done it. You can do it. Go back and study these pioneers of ours. How did they do it? Through faith. Faith, faith, 
never giving up. Now, friends, I've got to say, sometimes I look at those people like the Taliban, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab people, and I say, why will they go and just spend their lives so aimlessly and so meaninglessly? They know they're going to die, but they go anyway. And in the jungles of uh, South America, I forgot which country it was, one of these um, guerrilla soldiers was interviewed and asked, why would you give yourself to this cause, this pain, the trial, the uncertainty, the things you go through, sleepless nights, the jungle, and all the har harassment that comes with being a guerrilla soldier, knowing that I could be killed at any, any moment. And he said, um, well, the cause is bigger than I am, the cause. It's not about me, it's about the cause. And I say, so what about us Christians? Sometimes it's so easy for us to give up because we don't see the cause as bigger than we are. We don't see the end as bigger than we are. We don't see the price to possess as something worthy of the pain, the persecution that we go through. Oh, I will talk a little bit quickly about the price we pay. But let me just go on some more here. I mentioned some time ago how Jesus was lifted up as being superior to prophets and Moses and the temple and so on. You know, and they, they had, the writer had to do this because they had felt that Jesus really wasn't worth it anymore. And the writer said, look, Jesus is better than angels, better than Moses, better than the prophets, better than the tabernacle. But in the Old Testament system of sacrifice, Jesus, when you, when you got Jesus, you got it all. He, he's without equal. He has no equal. When you got him, you got him all. You got the whole package. <laughs> so why turn away? But you know, sometimes I believe we turn away because we don't know the value of what we have. It's like in John 4, Jesus comes to the woman of Samaria at the well, and Jesus asks for water. And she, the woman says, no, you, Jesus, you know, we don't take tea. Or in, in America, co coffee, same difference. Or coffee tea. <laughs> Jama Jama <laughs> coffee tea. And Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God, and the one who asked you for water, you would gladly give him water, and he will give you some that would spring up into everlasting life. That's water you're looking for, better water springing up. You wouldn't have to, have to come every day to this well. I'm saying, if you knew, and many Christians don't know the value of their faith. Don't know. What does it mean that I am saved? I'm saved. I have salvation. I have Jesus Christ. I have eternal life. What does it mean? We don't understand. If you knew the gift of God, you'd hold on with both hands to this thing we call salvation. <laughs> if you only knew the gift of God. If you only knew. We need to come to know this gift, this pearl of greatest price. If you knew it, 
You see, friends, I, one of the things all of us struggle with is this thing of faith. Our experience of Christ sometimes is up here, and it's never in here. I'm saying it's up here. But when you meet the man Jesus, and you really encounter him in a transforming experience, when you actually have been touched by him, you will say, I can't turn back. I can't turn back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Just this week, I was thinking, in fact, my devotional time, you know, I wasn't thinking about the sermon, I was thinking about the song, again, about this Christian life as ours. An old song came to me from the islands, Jamaica, here. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There's a race that I must run, and the victory soon will be won. Give me power every hour to be true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Give me power, power. All of us need to have met Jesus at a place where we cannot forget. Something happened. Something happened. It's not intellectual. And see, the faith I have, I deal with intellectual stuff all the time. Philosophies and philosophers and arguments and questions and these things. But I can't build my faith on an argument, a human argument. Why? Because a smarter mind may come and dispel and dismiss that argument, make it look nonsensical. But then, like that blind man in John 9 that met Jesus, when the Pharisees began to question him and to make him look like a fool, who did this for you? How could you? Why? He said, all about that thing, I can't tell you, I can't explain it. One thing I know, I was blind, but now I can see. I know this is another sermon. I'm, I'm not preaching the way I, I teach. I should preach, but it, and I just feel this thing, man. I'm talking about experience. Once I was blind, don't ask me about all those questions, things that are confusing, discombobulate, and things that confuse. All I can say, once I was blind, now I see. The experience testifies. It testifies. It gives evidence something has happened. I can't reason with you. And so those philosophers, nobody can take my faith because my faith is anchored in Jesus Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His hope, his covenant, his blood supports me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ, this solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Amen. Amen. Yes. You know, I was saying that some drop out of the faith because of this immature faith. Some quit because of unfulfilled expectations. Sometimes we, we, we come to Jesus for different reasons. Like a marriage, you know. Sometimes people fall in love for different reasons. We have certain expectations. Well, this 
person can make me happy. In the next five years, I can see myself with this massive house and cars and land. I can see that I'm swept up in this orbit of experience and I'm in another world. He or she will take me into this new realm. My God is so beautiful. It's all, you know, hmm. And you put pressure on that person that can't fulfill those expectations. Sometimes we come to Jesus and we believe, oh my God, but if Jesus, I go to Jesus, well, he'll make all my sorrows go away. Well, I'll never be in need. No suffering, no pain. It's all joy and laughter all the way. Riding off into the sunset. Swinging on a star. It's not so, friends. But the Christians of old, and even today, Christians in different parts of the world, you could go to Nigeria, northern Nigeria, you could go to Afghanistan, Pakistan, you could go to Morocco, you could go to various places in India, China. There are Christians who have to hide and disguise and to not even mention that they're Christians so they could survive the persecution. To mention that you are a Christian, you have signed your death warrant. But some would say, if it's not worth dying for, it's not worth living for. I'm saying for us, it's so easy. For the, old, for the New Testament Christians, it wasn't. To say I'm a Christian, and the word witness, I'm a witness for Jesus, it means the same word witness, although uh, it's not all meant to be that way, but it means a martyr. To take up the cross was to literally say, yes, I'm willing to go die on this cross that I'm carrying. I'm saying to us, friends, why are you following Jesus? What is it you're looking for in Jesus? If you're looking for a pain-free Christianity, he doesn't offer that. He offers a cross. If anyone will come after me, let him take his cross, follow me. In fact, when Jesus calls, he calls us to a cross, a yoke, and a plow, a cross. Think of what that means, a yoke, work, strenuous work, a plow, again, hard work. You think about it, friends. I don't know what I'm preaching because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going. Pastor Wanda, please forgive me. You know, you're, you're the homiletician around here. And so, you know, I come back to say some quit the race because of what they are, what they see as unjust suffering. Unjust suffering. Lord, why? Do my friends suffer? Why do I suffer? You know, well, Lord, I, I've been a good Christian. I do obey you. Come to church, pay my tithes, I pray, I read the scriptures. I do all I know how to do, Lord. Why does suffering come? Why aren't my prayers being answered? I'm saying that these are questions Things that throw people off all the time. I was broadsided only a couple of days ago by a revelation about someone I know. A person has quit the faith. That shall be revealed in us, Paul says. When you put the suffering on the scale, on one part of the scale, and the glory and the joy that shall be revealed, Paul says there's no comparison. 
the scale tips all the time way down with the joys that await us. The question is, can we wait? Can we run and keep on running until we get to the prize? Can we keep on running? That's the point, see. We lose out because we are wired to believe it's got to happen for us now. This quick, personal, instantaneous gratification, I've got to get it now. Not tomorrow, but now. And Paul, the writer of Hebrews said, it's, for, it's a long haul. But can you wait? Can you wait? Can you wait? The joys that are yet to come. The pain I feel now. No comparison. And the runner, in, pre in preparing for a race, the boxer preparing for a fight, knows you're going to put this body under some pressure. Pain. Oh, to lift those weights, right? To run, to skip the muscles. I think it was, yeah, it was Murray, a uh, tennis player from England, where well, he's actually Scottish. He said, um, I play tennis and immediately I've got to get into the jacuzzi, get into the hot bath because my body hurts. It hurts so badly to play. And there are many p players like that. They got to play through pain. But they you know there's a prize that's worth the pain. I've seen football players these, you know, incredible Hulk men see a cast on their hand. Why, why are you out here to help the team to win? They're playing with pain, playing through pain. My fellow Christians, brothers and sisters, we can do no less because there's more awaiting us. Can we wait? Do we see beyond the pain? The prize, the glory that's yet to come. So the writer tells us the persons, the pioneers to personate, that means these, the host of witnesses. I'm going to hurry on here, see it quickly. Again, in chapter, 11, chapter 12, verse 1, B, he says, there is a price to pay to win this race, to run this race and win. The price to pay, he, say, he says that we throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. We throw aside everything, the weight, some would say, and everything that hinders or entangles. In some translations, you throw off the weight, lay aside the weight. I said last time that word weight. In the Greek, it's the word onkos. We get the word oncology, a tumor, cancer, same word. It's a tumor. It's a weight, a swelling. And when you're like that, you can't really run, you know, because a swelling isn't muscle, really. It is something that really takes away from your ability to run. The writer says, lay aside 
every such thing that hinders. And the sin, the sin that entangles us, the sin that surrounds us, we can't run like to win when we are entangled. You're tied up. You're surrounded with, you're bandaged with sin. You can't run when, you both, when both feet are tied, can you? Is that right? You're going to win with both feet tied? You're going to run that way? Paul says, lay aside anything that is a weight. So the thing is that you don't go to run a race with a backpack on your back. You don't go with these heavy, what do you call these things you lift? Weights. And you have them, and you're running with them to win a race. You train with those things. You don't run with them. Right? So when you come to run, you run light. You're light. You're aerodynamic. You can slide through the airman. Right? Nothing to hold you back. And the writer says sin. There are certain entangling sins, certain habits, certain associations, certain places we go, things we do time and time again, and their habits, their habit forming, and their crushing taking the life out of us, the energy out of us. We can't run and we can't win because these things are sapping our energy, our spiritual energy. So, you'll see, to run this race, it'll take a good diet. The person who's going to be a marathon runner, you'll get onto a good diet. You stay on that diet for a long time. How is your diet for your race? How is your diet? How is your diet? A good diet of the word and prayer. A good diet of Bible reading. Church attendance, sharing your faith with others. How is your diet? Friends, what you leave out of your diet is as important as what you put in. You leave certain sins, entanglements, but there are certain things you've got to put inside to make you strong. A good diet. You need a good strategy Strategy. Satan comes like, sometimes he comes like a lion to roar, to roar, to kill you, but when he's coming that way, you, you run and hide. Sometimes he comes, though, like a serpent. He hides. Snips at your feet. Don't see him. What is your strategy in the race? Ephesians 6. Put on the whole armor of God. So that you are able to stand. And in the evil day you keep standing your ground. Not backing up. Your strategy. But you need endurance. Endurance. Lift. Now the battle for the strong. But for But notice. This patience. That's needed. And the writer says, again in verse 1, he says, Running with patience, the race marked out, marked out for us, marked out. In every race, there are lines. Can you remember? There are lines, lanes. If you're in lane one and you cross over to lane three, they disqualify you. Now, if you, if you come to the end and you're the last first one, you can do that. But if there are others behind you and you're crossing over like that, you can trip them up. They'll disqualify you. 
the writer says, there is a marked out course for you. I don't know the course God has for you. It's all different. God doesn't stereotype his children. He knows what's best for you. He has a course for you. He's saying, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Don't crisscross. Don't try to get into somebody else's lane. Don't try to be like somebody else. Be the person God has called you to be. Be all that you can be. Stay in your lane. But the writer says also, I've seen different athletes lose a race at the very end because they were looking behind to see the nearest competitor. The first person that run the, uh, uh, won the mile, a British guy, forgot his name, uh, Baxter, I think his name was. Forgot the first name. He won, but then another race. And he had this guy who was always on his tail, you know. And he, the guy was on him. And they were coming to the finish line. He just looked, behind, looked, looked like this. And his competitor passed him, won the race. He lost. We're saying, you keep your eye on Jesus, the prize. Jesus. If you stay on Jesus, you will not lose the race. You won't become distracted. You'll win. You'll win. It's all about Jesus, friends. And then the writer goes in to say, be like him in other ways because he took some brunt. <laughs> he suffered some things. And if you're going to be like him, be prepared also. Read succeeding verses, friends. It's there. He took some hits, hard, hard knocks. Ultimately, dying on the cross. And the writer says, you should be in the race knowing you're going to get some hard knocks too. You're going to get some hard knocks too. It's not just easy believing, believe his, uh, be, believes, be, believe his in friends. Oh, God is good. God can take you to the end. I don't know what your end will be, when your end will be. You know, I was thinking this just this week. A good friend of mine, that pastor friend, they would have me to come to California every year to preach for him. And, um, he died in his pulpit preaching. And I went to the, the funeral and memorial service and um, one of the preachers said, the way God calls us home is like children going to school on a school bus. There are different stops. So this child lives here so he gets picked up first bus moves on, another one gets picked up later, another one get, gets picked up later. It says, all of us are waiting for the bus. We're picked up at different times and we're dropped off at different times. But we've got to stay and wait our turn. When it comes to the end, we know we're ready, ready to go, ready to go. That's what's all about. Discipline for the distance. And I, I, I will keep it this way. I have a whole lot more left there. But like Pastor Wanda would say, I'll give you just this small amount. <laughs> Pastor Wanda, please come and close us out. Thank you. Praise the Lord. The trust you received from the Lord this morning. Commit those words to heart and think about and meditate on them. See, not everybody that starts the race finishes the race.
even though the starting is important, the end is what justifies the means. So, there are going to be challenges, like he said. But have you made up your mind that you want to finish the race? Because we're not just here to start. We're here to finish the race. So, there's going to be challenges, difficulties. And we all do go through it. You know? Sometimes you see people smiling, you know, it's like, oh, this person doesn't really go through nothing. But, and so the smiles may be fooling you, but they have learned to run the race smiling. So why don't you put up a smile too? Because the Lord is with you. not to say that no I'm not going through nothing no you're going through something but I'm going to make it through this shall pass too those who are runners and I've done marathon before begin to feel the pain on your side over here you're holding it and it's not going you have to keep running with it and now you can't even breathe but you have to go on painful you want to get to the end. And I hope Pastor will come back to it. There is a prize at the end. For the joy set before him. Amen. So let us make up our minds that I'm going to finish my race. If God gives me a hundred years on earth, that I will live all for him. At no point should it be said, like Pastor said of a friend, that you walked out. Where are you going? So we're going to pray. Let's pray for yourself. A man was complaining one day to God. He was praying and said, God, this race, this walk of faith is too hard. This race is too hard to run. And God asked, so what do you want to do? He says, it's too much. I can't take it. He says, the alternative is harder. alternative is harder. You want to run without God? Because not going with God doesn't mean that there is, is a pain-free life. But you have nobody to sustain you and to be with you. So if I have pain, I want to run with God with the pain. I don't want to be running without God with pain because the race is going to have pain anyway. So why run without God? I think the best decision is what I have made to run with Jesus. You have made that decision too. Don't get out. Don't let nothing tell you that no, without Christ, it's going to be better. Now it's going to be worse. It's going to be worse. Let's run with Christ. So pray with me this morning. I have, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Make it your prayer. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided. I have decided to follow. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to my mind. No turning back. No turning. How about this? Do not go with me. Do not go with me. Still I will fall. Do not go with me. I've made up my mind. Go. 
gonna follow Oh, not go with me Still I will follow No turning back Oh The world behind me The cross before me I'm gonna leave the world behind me Looking to Jesus Looking to Jesus on the cross The world behind Oh, before No turning back This is our prayer Last one I have decided This day I've decided to follow Jesus Today I have Whatever comes my way Whatever pain I do I have decided Turning back, no turning back. Oh, may the zeal of the Lord give us strength as we walk. May the Lord be our guide, may He be our sustainer. May the Lord shine His light on your path. May the Lord give you grace to endure your pain. But may he also give you strength to overcome your challenges. May he give you strength to overcome the sin that easily entangles us. May he give us wisdom to lay aside the weight, the indiscipline, the irresponsibilities. May he give us a glimpse of that joy for which we are running for and right here on earth may the Lord do miracles in our lives that we will know that the race is worth it this week may the Lord make a way for you where there seems to be no way may he give you a landing path, a place where you can take in breath and that you can run again the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord shine his face upon you. The Lord give you peace that surpasses all understanding. The Lord be your strength. May he give you a song. A song in the midnight hour. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Thursday will Wednesday there's Bible study and Thursday will be on the prayer line praying so join us at 8 p.m. Hallelujah. I have decided. We're close. You can shake somebody's hand and tell them to run their race. Discipline for the distance. Decided. Those I'm meeting with, please let us meet shortly. Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Yeah, yeah. I'm not turning back. Thank you. Please, um, if your name was mentioned to meet with me, make sure we meet shortly. Uh, Brother Bompuku, Brother.